नमस्कार वेलकम टू प्रकाश ऑन बेसिक्स आई एम प्रकाश जोब वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट धर्म टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक ऑफ द बेसिक्स ऑफ द पौराणिक धर्म इट्स अ पार्ट ऑफ द लार्जर पिक्चर द सनातन धर्म समथिंग दैट वी टॉक्ट ऑफ लास्ट टाइम it is a major step in the simplification and rationalization of the vedic religion that was prior to it uh, vedic rituals were restricted to the elite the yagnas the sacrifices the ashwamedha the rajasuya and so many others were restricted to the top brass only so what about the salvation of the others the women the shudras the non aryans what about them the religion specified dominantly in the puranas known as the pauranic dharma was the solution to this it is here that the higher upanishadian concepts were simplified for the general usage of the common man easy to understand follow and practice so this religion became the religion of the masses as it was known then the loka dharma it is pauranic dharma because uh, the basic tenets are covered and explained in the puranas i have gone into details of what puranas are some time back uh, but this is not the only set of texts uh, there is also a major influence of the smrutis the narad smruti the yagnavalka smruti the vishnu smruti the manu smruti uh, the variety of dharma sutras the vedangas and of course the epics um these cover the social structure norms uh in detail and these were included in the pauranic dharma after the two epics ramayan lays more stress on the individual ideals ram sita lakshman hanuman jatayu these are all beyond common man's achievable targets just so they are more god like uh the smrutis uh list out the behavior norms of the kalpa sutra concepts in the form of rules and regulations and these are skillfully incorporated in the great epic the mahabharat and gita of course is a part of the mahabharat itself and it is based on the uh, upanishads uh, all the knowledge is condensed from the upanishads simplified and put down in the gita for many gita is the ultimate hindu scripture so it is this mahabharat that also influenced the pauranic religion because it clarified many of the ideas of the puranas the puranas had no uh, restrictions as to who could study them the eligibility conditions uh, for the study as far as the vedas was concerned was pretty strict puranas you could listen to follow and study and this could be done by the women the shudras and the others also the information in them was simplified suitably modified knowledge from the vedas uh, thus in the form of lores and tales uh, the vedic and the upanishadian knowledge was passed on by these bards to the masses and those who could read could follow them on their own also that's how knowledge from the vedas in a modified form of the puranas trickled down 
do the masses. The Puran ideals became the core of the Puranic dharma. Uh, many new concepts were introduced in the Puranas. They were originally talked of to some extent in the Upanishads, uh, but their details are more specific in the Puranas. Bhakti for example, Upavas which is fasting, festivals, pilgrimage, the importance of pilgrimage sites uh, which are known as the Tirtha Kshetras, they all became a part of the Puranic Dharma to be followed and practiced by the masses. The Puran ideals became the core of the Puranic Dharma. Many of the old concepts were also given new meanings. Yajna, the major concept of Vedas was modified to a large extent. Sacrifices part of it were also modified. The concept of dharma itself was thought of in a different manner. I will go into details of all this uh, as time proceeds. Mm. In fact, uh, since the society was broken up into a number of identifiable parts, every social unit had its own ideal behavior norms, which were specified in the Puranic Dharma. And these became the individual dharma for each of them. Uh, Pativrata dharma, that is the dharma or the ideals to be followed by the wife. The Gruhastha dharma, which was extremely dominant, the duties and characteristics and the religious seriousness attached to the householder. The Atiti dharma how do you behave with the guests and what are the responsibilities and duties of the guests too were a part and parcel of the Atithi Dharma. And then of course, with so many kings and kingdoms uh, that I had mentioned some time back, uh, the Mahajanapadas and others, every king had its own, his own duties and these were all specified in what is known as the Raja Dharma, the duties of the king. So, each one of them had their own specified religious commitments made and clarified in the Puranic Dharma. Then what about the Vedic Yajnas, did they disappear? Not really, the rituals and the Yajnas continued, the Ashwamed, the Rajasuya and others were a part and parcel of the activities of the kings, they continued, but the Puranic Dharma provided alternatives for all of them which could be practiced very easily by the common man. And because of this the doors and paths of the swarga that is the heavens and mukti that is the salvation were thrown open for the common man. The various standards and morals of that time, the ethics at that time were clarified in the Puranic Dharma. The Puranic Dharma then became Loka Dharma, the religion of the masses. There was also a radical change in the nature of God concept associated with the Puranic Dharma. Some of the old nature gods lost their dominance and importance by the time of the Puranas. Indra, Varun, Agni, Prajapati, all these no longer remained the top brass of gods. Socially important gods gained prominence. Uh, Rudra uh, became the mild Shiva in a variety of forms. Vishnu, whose social dominance made him come to the forefront. Gods like Kuber, Lakshmi, Ganesh, Saraswati, the goddess of knowledge, all these started gaining more importance. And the major concept of the avatars was introduced 
and it gained importance. God families too became important. The Vishnu family or the Shiva family also gained importance. All these resulted in the rise of the five different sects in Hinduism, subclasses in Hinduism that I had mentioned previously. The Shaiva, the Vaishnav, the Ganapatya, the Saur and the Shakta. I will go into details of these uh, as time passes by. Uh, and then of course, there were totally new gods that were introduced. Because of these sects, there was a lot of interaction between the different sects also. So, combination gods were also introduced. Harihara, which is a combination of Vishnu and Shiva. Dattatreya, which is the combination of Brahma, Vishnu and Mahesh. Ayyappa, uh, Panchayatan concept was introduced. Uh, that's very interesting. Uh, since by that time gradually temple concepts was, were introduced and started gaining importance, there would be temples for a specific deity. But anybody could walk into any temple and if I am a Shaiva, I need to see my Vishnu somewhere. If I am going into a, uh, another temple or if I am praying Ganpati, if I walk into a Vishnu temple, I need to see my Lord Vishnu side somewhere, the presence of Ganapati or Shiva or the sun god or the Devi. And so, the Panchayatan concept was introduced. So, a majority of temples you would find would have a central deity with four more small different gods that were placed at different corners. And so, anybody walking into a Shiva temple would also walk into the Vishnu temple that was at the side or the Ganapati that was there in front and so forth. Then there was like uh, Ardhanari Nateshwar, which is a combination of Shiva and his uh, consort. Uh, there were gods associated with also uh, animal forms, Sharabha was one of them, Narasimha was another. Varaha, both these turned out to be avatars that were prayed and respected. And one more major concept came in. Uh, the directions were also given specific gods to take care of them. These were known as the Dikpal. Dig is direction. And uh, the word commonly talked of is Dasha Disha which talks of the 10 directions, 8 of them plus the one on top and one below. These were distinctly identified and used by the time of Puranic Dharma. Uh, the positions are very simple and easy to understand. Um, as far as uh, our concept of North, South, East, West, uh, are attached with northeast, northwest, southeast and southwest and these form the eight directions around the center. Urdhva that is the top is associated with Brahma and Adho that is the Nadir or the lowermost point is associated with Vishnu, the support of everything. And then uh, Purva that is east is controlled by Indra, the god of rains and weather. The north is controlled by Kuber, the god of wealth. South is controlled by Yama, who represents not only dharma, but also death. And then you have west, which is associated with Varuna, the sea god. These were known as Uttar, Dakshina, Purva and Pashim. But for Northeast, Northwest, Southeast and Southwest, there were specific names that were given. The Northeast was known as Ishanya and its god was Ishan, the god of time, the god of resurrection, the god of birth. The Southeast was known as the Agneya Disha. Agni, the fire god 
was its lord. The southwest was Naitrutya, controlled by Nitruti, the god of sorrow and decay, and the northwest was controlled by Vayu, the wind god. So, the gods were associated with directions also. So, you could get up in the morning and pray to a specific god turning in that particular direction. There were some other concepts also that gained importance in the Puranic Dharma. There was a concept called the Apurva that was introduced. A person's yadnas were restricted to himself and were known as the Pancha Mahayadnya. The Bhakti form gained a dominant role. Tirtha and Tirtha Kshetras gained prominence also. Upavas that is fasting under specific conditions. The concept of avatar, the concept of pap and punya, the concept of runa, something that I started off with right on the first day. All these are major concepts from the Puranic Dharma. These are words that I have uttered from the original Sanskrit words. Their meanings and their details is something that I will go into next time because that is something that we need to understand. The Puranic Dharma is the core of all the all that is commonly practiced by a majority of Hindus today. This is the crux of the Puranic Dharma and their details I will go into next time. If you have liked whatever I have said, if you have appreciated whatever I have said, pass on this knowledge to your friends, let them know about it, let them also know what the Puranic Dharma is. Like and subscribe to this channel. Until I come back for more details of the Puranic Dharma. Namaskar.